Hi guys, welcome back to Skate 3. This is another one of my favorite places to skate. And it is the hotel district. This little hidden away square like isn't that much to skate here but some of the obstacles and stuff are just really fun to skate like this ledge on a ledge type thing and this manual pad although can be a bit tricky. Let's actually get on top of it. I have to do that trick at least once in every video. That was the new trick I was working on. I don't really play skate very often, except for when I'm making these videos. So, this is... Oh, this is really the only time I get to practice tricks. Not that much has happened in my life since the last video. Except I had another bass lesson. Well, I had to give another bass lesson. To the same girl as before. Until now, it's a weekly thing, every Wednesday. And it's really fun. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. It's really just the first lesson that's always the worst. I tend to be a bit awkward in any situation, really, but especially when uh, when interacting with people I don't know. But she's a cool chick, and. I can tell she she enjoys playing bass and that she she does practice as much as she, as much as she can. That's really the most important thing for me because well I can't really tell from experience but if I if it was really obvious that a student was not putting in any effort at all I don't think I would care that much because well I can only do so much as a, a teacher to try and get people to practice 
but if they don't, if they don't enjoy playing or if they can't be bothered to put in some effort, then there is not much I can do. And I wonder if, if that was the case, if I would actually refuse to teach that student any longer. Because my, my general philosophy is that I'll be willing to teach anyone as long as they want to be taught. Because there is, well, there's never really a point where getting lessons becomes useless or where it's not worth it anymore. The only real factor is how much I can teach someone. Because I can only do so much and I only know so many techniques and you know base related skills that if there's nothing more I can teach them then there's really no point unless I learn new things Which is a very, uh, well, I wouldn't say underestimated part, but I didn't expect it to, to have that much of an effect on my own playing. Because I do notice that ever since I started teaching her, that I've been spending a lot more time playing myself because I want to be, you know, certainly I want to be prepared for whatever we're going to do in the next lesson. But also in general, I want to keep getting better so I can keep teaching her stuff that I've learned myself. And also there is a little bit of pressure for me to, at the very least, know what I'm doing at all times and to be very, very conscious of my own playing. Because if I'm not, if I don't know what I'm doing, then I don't really know how I'm supposed to explain it to her or show her exactly what I play and how I play it and why I play it the way I do stitching music is a, a very well a very vague topic anyway not really like math or any other subject where it's right or wrong. And because it's so subjective, I want to at least be able to justify why I do certain things a certain way. and why I feel like she should at least try to acquire certain skills. Because it started the first lesson already <laughs> with um, playing with your fingers versus playing with a, with a pick. Because neither of 
the two is wrong or right or whatever. They're both slightly more appropriate for certain styles, but there's really no rule telling which which of the two is only suited for certain things. I had this teacher at school, at the music school. He, he was actually a jazz bassist, so I he didn't give me bass specific lessons. All he did was give me reading class. So where I have to read all kinds of stuff on site, just reading exercises. And he's a, a very accomplished jazz bass player. And pretty famous I think but he didn't look like it I mean he didn't act like it and he only plays with a pick which is I don't even think I've ever heard of a jazz bassist playing with a pick but he can play some of the most insane stuff you've ever heard and seen like really blisteringly fast I didn't exactly this from him but my my own bass teacher told me that the the reading class teacher the jazz guy that he was partially taught by Jacopo stories which is kind of an, well not kind of it's a very impressive um, well very impressive thing to be able to say. He's probably the most well known and respected bass player in general. Not just within jazz or fusion, but just by bass players from all kinds of genres and heritage. in the last video that I was considering of giving more lessons or giving teaching more than one student because at first I was planning to only teach her because it would be less stressful for me and less stuff to worry about But considering it's, for now at least, the only way I can make any amount of money, I'm heavily considering uh, putting up more ads to get more students so I can do it as a part-time thing instead of just one, one student every week. I mean, one student once a week. I 
thing is, it just depends so much on the student. Because if I if I was really lucky, all my all the students I would potentially have would be like the girl I'm teaching now, or the she's not really a girl. She's a bit older than me, so <laughs> the woman I'm teaching now. But it's kind of inevitable that there will be students with whom I I don't get along and that make me uncomfortable. And I'm slightly afraid that that will happen. Because then I fear that the, the lessons in general will suffer. I'm not the most confident person in the world, which does make life in general slightly more difficult than it needs to be, even though it probably isn't, but I, I just believe it is. And it's not always a, a good place to be. I mentioned in the last video how many students I would need to have to make any significant amount of money. And that's kind of why I, why I'm hesitant to put up ads to get more students, because I know it would be a lot less complicated to, to just get a, a normal job with a standard wage. But I'm 95% sure that I would enjoy teaching more than any of those kind of jobs. Unless it was something to do with translating or, I mean, there are jobs that I can see myself doing and enjoying. I just can't find any of those jobs or any job ads like that. So... Teaching, teaching music is one of the few things I can, I really enjoy. But, um, chances are that I'll, that I won't make anywhere near as, as much money as I would if I had a normal job. So that's kind of what's keeping me from really committing to it. I don't want to sound like every decision I make should be or is based on money. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that There is rent and energy bills and food and you know, just all kinds of stuff that really need or require a decent amount of income. I wish I could be like one of those people who believe that the universe will take care of them and that everything will always fall into place. Because 
Because I'd like to believe that, but... Maybe I'm a bit too rational and or... Anxious about all kinds of things to... To just leave it at that. if I sound a little bit depressed or, or depressing. I'm just at, at that point in my life when I have to learn how to fly, so to speak. Turns out these videos are a good way for me to to get some kind of order in my head. Because as is often the case, talking about it does help to to just get some kind of clarity. Even if it's talking to myself more than anything else. Because I do get, or I do tend to, you know, feel overwhelmed by a lot of things. Like I said, I, it's, I'm at that point where I need to figure figure out what I want to do with my life, and whether or not it's worth pursuing, and yeah, just some pretty hefty decisions. end the video because I'm approaching the 30 minute mark I usually aim for 25 to 30 minutes of raw footage so I can edit it down to roughly 20 minutes There's always a lot of dead moments where, I, where I'm not seeing anything for minutes on end. That was a weird enough trick to end the video on. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my my little rambling session. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.